in the bush in the video. So welcome today. You are all welcome. I'm glad you are here. Brother Leonard, are you still in Kalomo? How is how are you? Can condolences on the loss of your grandmother. I don't know if he's hearing me. Anyway. How are you, sir? I can I could barely hear you. Uh, good morning. Can you hear me now? Yes, now I can hear you. I'm saying, how is Kalomo? Did you move well? Did you move at all? Yes, I'm sorry. No, I didn't manage to go. Uh, they had the problem, so I didn't go. Okay, okay. Sorry. That, yes, it varied well, yes. Okay. Yeah, we, we, we were with you in prayer. But yeah, we prayed for you. God is... Thank you. Sufficient. Thank you. All right. All right. Let's begin then. Thank you all for coming. We love you. And let's continue to do the right thing. Let's continue to make this household our own and uh, something which can bring the kingdom of God to the world. I want to thank you all with all my heart. You, you guys are very faithful and God is going to bless your faithfulness. I want to thank you very much. And I want this year to be different year. Last year was a year of, of awakening. We, we spoke of a lot of things. We discussed a lot of things. This year, we want it to be the year of actualization, the year of, of uh, rebuilding the family. There is something which God wants us to do as us, every human, every, every person on earth has this age in them to do right. And, uh, and you know that God has given us this precious truth which we need to do. And of course, I know I've given you all these words, which are, which some of the, uh, of, uh, of them have, have uh, challenged your previous knowledge. But I cannot do this alone, like I always say. We need to do this together. We need to do it together. You need to support me. Of course, equally, the same thing, we need to create a household. We begin from the micro to the macro. From your household to, to this, my business is the Zoom. Help me build Zoom, this uh, household, sorry, not the Zoom. My business is, is, is the household level, our household. Help me build it. You see how God is going to bless you. Not, not by magic, but what I will do to your life and your mind. And I know exactly you understand what my calling is, what God has shown us. We meet all the time on Zoom, every time on Sunday, 9.30 to 10.50. Every Sunday, a.m., 9.30 a.m. to 10.50 a.m. So continue supporting this. Uh, sometimes you can share the, the Zoom recording on YouTube to your friends, and let's keep moving. But we, we really need to work hard for our socks. Let's support this with what we have told you, what the Bible requires from you. You all know there's no new messages to give to you concerning that. But all I'm saying is that I don't want to be, to be um, preaching this message as though it's music to your ears. You come here every Sunday and that's all. It doesn't make sense afterwards. Because we need to free humanity from the diverse mindsets, which has created problems on earth. Even in religion, we know that religion, as uh, you see, uh, as you understand, 
In religion, we have what they call denominations. So we're getting to learning now. Hope everyone is ready. Denominations. Religion as what they call denominations. In Christianity, in, in um, Islam, Islam, they've got different denominations. They, the Sunni and the, and the Shiites, Christianity has different denominations. That simply tell, tells you that it's, they're divided. Denomination of Christianity. They said denominator. Denominator of one thing. They are all one thing, religion. A denominator of one, of one whole, as in mathematics. But we, are, we know for a fact that God has created two Adams. That's why we have such problems. The two Adams. In the book of 1 Corinthians 15.45, the Bible reads, let me go there, I'm quoting it from my mind, I didn't write it. 15 verse 45, speaking of the two Adams, God gave us, God created two Adams. The Bible reads, and so it is written, the first Adam, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Two Adams. First, uh, first man, Adam, made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. That's what the, the Bible is saying. So the two Adams were supposed to, to be brought together to produce one being. This is not saying that man, this, man created the other half of Adam. Let me read it again. We're in class this lane. And so it is written, the first Adam was made by who? By God. The first Adam was made a living soul by God. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit by God. So they were both made by God. Two Adams was a they were made by God and they were supposed to produce one being. What is the moral of the story there? Remember, the Bible is very um, prophetic, allegorically speaking in the Bible. When we say two Adams, we're saying two, two beings were supposed to produce one being. And, the two, and when we say two Adams, we mean two minds. So in order to be a spiritual person, you should have been physical first. That's what we're saying. You see some of the Bible prophets will tell you that man was made from water flow to water and then to water to water. So in order to be a spiritual being, you should have been physical first. But God first made the physical man. So God made two Adams. God gave Adam knowledge to learn everything. The first Adam, the physical being, he named him everything. Or rather, Adam, after God gave him the knowledge to learn everything, he named everything. But because he was physical, after naming everything, he got the credit. And that is... And that, and that is what happening to human mind. Because we, have, we are stuck in the physical Adam. Why am I saying this? Because I want us to, to, to start thinking now of propelling ourselves to the spiritual Adam. Because for us to be a, to be a spiritual being, to, to be a, a one being in God, the two Adams, the two minds are supposed to be brought together. So Adam was given knowledge. And he named everything, meaning he, he, he gave, he had the dominion over everything. Every time he conquered something, he got the credit. He never appreciated God. He did that so that we can worship him. Adam has done that. Even the world is created in such a way that everything, every knowledge, every human being has, when they give it to us, they want us to worship them. Remember, worship is worshiping. Two words. Worshiping. To, to ship the word to others. To speak the word to others. 
whatever we speak, we worship Adam. For example, we would say, I'm using this gun, it's made by an American. Or I'm learning this scientific concept, it's made by Chinese. It was discovered by, by Chinese. So man named everything and got the credit. He never appreciated God. He did that so that we should worship him. That's why he's a God of the world now. We worship him. We worship him. Verse 46, the same book of First Corinthians 15, verse 46, it says that, how bet that was not first, which is spiritual, but that which is natural. You see? The nat so every human being must come from the natural first. It says, however, that was not first, which, was, which is spiritual, but that which is natural. And afterwards, that which is spiritual, they should be that, you see, these two must be together. That's what God is saying. First natural, then the spiritual, to create one whole being. But what we have is a being who didn't want to progress to spirituality, but to self-worship after he named everything. 47, the first man is of the earth. We begin as earthy people, earthy. The first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. 48, as is the earthy. So if you remain in the physical, such are they also that are earthy. You behave like the earthy man. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are, are heavenly. So the state you are in as a human being defines your character. 49 says, and as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. That's what we're saying. But we, the image only comes when you give yourself to this cause. That's what I'm saying. If this is not your cause, then you go to, to another place. You leave this place. You, you go to a place where your mind is going to be fully engaged. So what we're saying that people must begin to understand that there is a purpose we are here and we need to achieve something and they need to be fully engaged with this place. You need to help me to build this in all aspects. So, when they say to bear the image, the Bible used this word. Let me read it again. As we, it's, it's showing that we bore the image. So, it's saying verse 49 again, 1 Corinthians 15, 49. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. To bear the image, to bore the image, to bear the image is to carry the image. So now, how do you carry the image? Remember, we are people who understand these things. I've broken down these things for you. But I can still go on and explain to, to the world. To bear the image is to carry the image. Remember, what is the image? Maybe to, today, let me break it down to something low. Because we mentioned before that the image is the mental faculty of God. Not the physical image, it's the, the thinking. But the image, you notice the letters are the image of the words. And we say the word is God. So we bear the image, meaning the letters are the image of the word. And the word, remember, is what judges us. And the word is the son of man. So the son of man is the judge. So the word. The, let, the words you read every day will influence your image. Even Adam used, he had his own image. And the image has the letters in the books, the things we read. So when, we, when Adam became to rule the world, he put a mind in us that hates your fellow person, your fellow human being. When you see at this, when you look at this, this makes sense now. He put a mind in us that hates people. That's why we are so to kill one another. That's why even I gave you a, an example, you would love your, your son at home. You would do anything for your son. But you will see your neighbor's child dying from hunger. All you do is shake your head and pass and go. 
if it's if it's in this time where we have Facebook fanatics, someone who will be drowning or will be dying, all you do is to take a picture and share it on your page. It's because the mind Adam put in us makes us hate one another. And that's what he did when, in particular, when he, start, when he came to rule the minority uh, uh, races as he calls them, because there's no minority race. He will make you hate your fellow person, and that's why you are so into killing one another. It's like the, the tree, when the, when the leaves fade, they lose water. You remember, water is knowledge. You begin to hate one another. You become your your conscious seared like a hot iron. All you do is what you want. But these people, the knowledge Adam gave to us has deteriorated our minds so much that even remember many sons of men. Men, men of God, they had a problem to transform the human mind. Even Elijah, the scripture shows you, it, it does to show you that Elijah went in a whirlwind into heaven. Because every time when you don't want the truth, the truth will go back to, to heaven, to, into the scriptures. Wind is emotionalism. Elijah went to heaven in it. He was talking to people. Elijah, just, just, just like any, any one of us, men of God, he was talking to people he knew they were lying. Even when they are saying they're listening to him, they, are, they were not. Because we see it in your, in your behavior and in your actions. We tell you a lot of things. God says you must do this. You, you cannot do this. You can, and it, we don't see you comply, I mean, uh, following what God is saying. Most of the men of God went into the whirlwind. Whirlwind is in the emotions. Remember, Paul says that to the churches, he was uh, having head over. He says, sometimes you become so emotions. You say, remember, I came to you for three years trying to convince you with tears. Because people, nice, the word of God to the people most of the time is just music. When they leave, they go and do their own things. So Elijah was talking to people. He knew that even, even if he is speaking, they're not listening to him. That's why Christ tells us that. Even if they don't listen, preach as though you're preaching to stones, to rocks. When the Bible says God is going to rule the world with a rod of iron, God is not a tyrant, I, told, uh, I, I mentioned to you. You begin to understand what God has sent me to, how God has sent me to explain the Bible. He said he's going to rule the world in our time with a rod of iron. All of you guys are very lenient people. What is, you know, these things, like I told you, they, they, we made the English language so easy to explain the things of the world, to explain the truth. I showed you the, the Bible, the words are acronyms, and some of these things, when the Bible says he is going to rule the world with a rod of iron, you begin to understand, as I'm showing you, these things I'm showing you, and you need to support these things for, for us to continue doing this, you know? You, you know the atomic number for iron. You are lenient people. Atomic number for iron is 26. Am I right or wrong? You can Google it. So when the Bible says God is going to rule the world with a rod of iron, atomic number for iron is 26. And 26 is the, is, is, uh, is the number of the, of the alphabet. So when we say he's going to rule the world with a rod of iron, the son of man is going to come to begin to rearrange the alphabet in the right way. Like I, I'm showing you, when I say to, to bear the image means to carry the image. Elijah went in the woman, he went in, he, he, that, that's emotionalism. He was talking to people who were lying, he knew that. Elijah was always running away from people, running away from Jezebel. They were seeking his life. So he had to go as in a woman, in emotions. So when the Bible says he's going to rule the world with the rod of iron, iron's atomic number for iron is 26. 
number of, of, the, of the alphabet. This son of man, when he comes, is, is going to know how to rearrange your letters, your, your images, the letters, in their right way for man's mind to change from the physical mind into a spiritual mind. That is why you need to accept the truth from those who know better than you. If you're a man of contention, if we tell you, you can't come to, the, to, to a man of God, the ebb target, you think you are, you are smarter, you interpret it wrongly. Well, praise God. Because the son of man is the U.S. of man. It doesn't say, I mean, it's, it's the S-U-N, not S-O-N. And you know that the sun is the light that shines in light. That's normal. You won't see light. You won't see light in, I mean, you won't see the sun in darkness. It shines in light. There's no two things as, it's not saying the sun is residing in darkness. No, the sun shines in light. Even suns will tell you. You won't see it in the darkness. So when the Bible says God made man in his image, we're telling, trying to show you who you are. That's why now, because you are orphans, you begin now to behave in a, in a dead way. You are dead. And even when you worship God, you want to pray to, to God to, to give you money to buy meal meal because you have not followed the rules of life on how to do those things. But we, we, we come to God so that he arranges our mind from a physical mind to a spiritual mind. So God made man in his image. And where are the images? The images are in the books, the letters. Just as it's like, you know, there are a lot of things I can explain to you. I'm trying to, to, position, to position your mind where, every, where as I go on, you begin to understand what I mean when I'm explaining the Bible like that. God made man in his image. Images are in the book. When you read the book, you're going to bear the image of the author. So the dead in Christ, for example, when you say the dead in Christ, who are the dead in Christ? Who are they asleep in Christ? Jesus, Moses, the people in the cloud, the people in the book, the people in the heavens. Mm -hmm. But we will continue. I will continue to, to, to speak like this, whether people hear me or not, because the Bible says God has given us the mandate to preach the word of God, to shout it from the rooftops. Even that, you know, when you, when you listen to the word from the rooftops, this is like resonating to the time we are, we, 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 we are at. When I say, I'm, I'm going to shout the truth from the rooftops, I'll ask you a, a question, what is on the rooftops? The rooftops, they are antennas and, and dishes. You see, we are meeting the Lord in the air now. I can shout the, the words I'm speaking. Very soon, I'll put them on YouTube. They are going to watch them from Australia, from New Zealand. I'm shouting from the rooftop. You begin to, to understand that and begin to, to apply it in your life. You look at the finer meanings of the truth, then it will guide you into a right person. Don't look at the truth as, as a historical story. Then you're going to, to worship God in carnality, in the physical. So we, we will meet the Lord in the air as such also. We'll explain that as we go on. Just like when the Bible says in his glory, the son of man in his glory. The son of man in his, in his glory, in his body, in body. The example I, 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 I could give is that uh, the light bulb is the glory of the bulb. So the son of man or the preacher, the prophet, or I am the glory of the son of man. The son of man is the truth. These words are difficult to understand because we live in the world which was created like that by God. We begin from physical to spiritual. We live in what is called Eden. And I told you the acronym for Eden, Eden, E-D, E-N, Eden. E-D stands for eternal darkness, E-N, eternal life. Because of the two minds, Adam and Christ, 
eternal darkness in Adam. Not know darkness means not knowing. You are dark in your mind. You don't know. You don't understand things. So, but we need to come. The son of man needs to come in his glory in a body of of someone carrying the words. So you need to listen to people who know more than you. And in the water, I mean, in the world, you call them higher powers, isn't it? The English language is, we gave them a good language. Sometimes they even fail to explain it themselves. Who is the higher power? The higher power is those who are knowledgeable to you. Why do we say that? Because your English tells you again, knowledge is power. So higher power, someone who has more knowledge than you. We need to understand, I've been telling you, even as we go in this year, we use the Bible because the Bible was designed to be the mind. Our minds can only be stable if we begin to understand what is in the Bible, not just understanding, but understanding the allegory and understanding and then the, what that which is in the Bible begin, becomes flesh, becomes us. Because then when you begin to understand the, the Bible, you need to, to, to know how to break it. Remember again, the Bible in its state also has been misinterpreted in some, some ways, but the good part is that the truth vindicates itself even now. The Bible is just a guide. So your mind, the Bible was designed to be the mind. That's why every Sunday um, I come here showing you things from the Bible because I need your, your, the Bible must become the mind. Then you begin to understand, even like statements in the Bible, which says, God is love. Now, if you don't understand, if your mind is physical, you start thinking, God is that little emotion. God is not an, an emotion. When the Bible says God is love, it's the English, which you need to understand, debunk. You know, interpretation sometimes, they'll, they'll say it in a way where to be ambiguous why it to be interpreted wrongly by other people, but in its original state, the Bible says God is the author of love. God is not an emotion. You can't say God is love, then you're saying God is an emotion. That's why if you notice, many of the men of God, when they, they to talk about love, they want to now qualify it. No, what it means there is agape, it's not eros, because they are failing to tell you that God simply, what the Bible is saying there, is that God is not an emotion, but God is the author of love. Uh, just a reminder, just a reminder, we'll be logged out, I think, uh, in a few minutes or a minute or less. And um, the moment we're logged out, please let's log back in using the same uh, credentials we had.